Hi friends, my name is Antonisha and I'm a staff writer here at The Daily Grace Co. Have you ever wondered how to pray scripture? You may have heard that we should pray God's word back to him, but maybe you don't know how. You may not be familiar with the idea that we should pray God's word back to him at all. Stay tuned friends for a crash course on how to pray scripture. So praying scripture has to start with our observation and interpretation of scripture. When we have a proper understanding of what the text says, then we can have a better understanding of how we should pray that particular passage back to God. You should also look for ways that the text you're reading points to Christ. Scripture sometimes expresses our need for a Savior, lists the attributes of God that are personified in Christ, alludes to the Messiah anticipated in the Old Testament, or mentions Christ by name in the New Testament. Let's look at Psalm 116, 5-7 together as an example. As we walk through this passage, we'll look at its meaning and how we can take the text's intended meaning and pray it back to God. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is compassionate. The Lord guards the inexperienced. I was helpless and He saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. When we read these verses in context of the entire psalm, we learn that the psalmist is thanking God for deliverance and for hearing and answering his prayer. Verses 5-7 through seven are an expression of worship to God for his mercy and grace. Likewise, when we pray this psalm back to God, we can also thank God for his mercy and grace. We can thank him that he is gracious, righteous, and compassionate, like verse 5 says. We can also point specific ways that God has exhibited his grace, righteousness, and compassion in our own lives. In verse 6, the psalmist says that the Lord guards the inexperienced and that when he was helpless, that God saved him. From this verse, we can look back on our own lives and thank God for guarding us when we were inexperienced and for saving us when we were helpless. We can also ask for God's continued protection in areas in which we are still inexperienced and for his continued salvation in areas in which we are still helpless. In verse 7, the psalmist speaks to his own soul, reminding himself that he can rest in God's past and future goodness. In our own prayers, we can thank God for specific ways that we have seen His goodness in our own lives. We can ask God to help us continually rest in His faithfulness. If I were praying this psalm, it might sound like this. God, thank you for the grace, righteousness, and compassion that you've displayed to me in your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for guarding me and leading me when I don't know what to do. Thank you, Jesus, that when I was helpless, you gave your life to save me. Continue to protect me and guard me from my own lack of knowledge Keep me safe within your will. Thank you, God, that because of Jesus, I find eternal rest in you now and forever. Help me to remember your goodness and faithfulness to me always. Amen. As you continue to practice praying scripture, remember to apply your prayers to your family, friends, loved ones, pastors, and leaders. My prayer for you is that as you pray, you will experience deeper intimacy with God and a more profound love for Him and His Word. See you next time, friends.